Okay folks, it's Alex Woods here, civil litigator. This is just a short summary to tell you what's going to be talked about in the following vlog, okay? This is for you if you are thinking about contesting a will, or making a claim on an estate after somebody's died, Inheritance Act claim, although the case that I talk about in this particular instance is a claim for lack of testamentary capacity, i.e. they weren't in their right mind when they made them the will. Also, a claim for promissory or proprietary estoppel, where a promise has been made during the lifetime of the deceased and it would be unconscionable for them to renege on that, you know, post-death. Above all, the vlog that you're about to hear is, uh, you know, be careful before you bring a claim. And uh, be careful because there may be cost consequences and you may have to cash flow litigation, okay? Particularly if you're bringing a claim against an estate with executors who may, may even be using the funds in that estate to fight you off with expensive lawyers. Okay, so, uh, you know, that being said, if you've got uh, a claim that you've you feel you have genuine that you feel has genuine merit then obviously you'll be wanting to bring a claim uh, through the courts of England and Wales and if you do things properly you probably will get justice Not always but you probably will get justice but what a lot of people fail to realize is that just because you've got a strong claim doesn't mean that you that you can get away with not playing the game not understanding the rules of the game I'm ashamed I'm afraid ashamed that's a Freudian slip because I'm a lawyer, someone who benefits from uh, people's um, misfortunes, I guess, and injustices and so on and so forth. So if you are going to, uh, and, and it all, you know, it's almost better to just get on with your life and forget about it, uh, you know, unless you, it's a serious amount of money, you've been seriously wrong, and it's just not right. and you've made a commercial decision that you can afford to fight it as well. So always be making a commercial decision, not just a decision based upon uh, the fact that you feel your claim is right. It's critical, obviously important, that you've got real merit to your claim. But that is not enough, I'm afraid. OK, I hope that summary helps and that you enjoy the vlog. Now, the first thing to note is it's very important that you, I was about to say get legal advice, but either advise yourself legally or get some legal advice at the earliest stage as you possibly can in relation to a claim. The courts are jam-packed with litigants in person who feel they've got right on their side. And this is exactly the situation in this case. And I think there's real merit in this claim and I think he'll win. But uh, the, the dangers of getting involved in, in litigation where you just feel that you've got a strong case and you just think, well, I'm just going to pitch up at court and the judge is going to see the merits in my claim. It's in, the, in the circumstances of this particular case, you had a sibling who looked after the deceased. They were sisters towards her later years, basically provided a care home for her under her own roof. And, and when the issue of, well, how is the sibling going to pay for that, because it was a number of years, and what contribution is she going to make? She said, I'm not going to pay you, but I'll, what I'll do is I'll cut you into my will. And in fact, she made this sister, my client, the main beneficiary under the will. Now, a number of years later, they, um, she, she, she moved out, she recovered, she was actually hospitalised, there were medical issues, and she ended up living with another sibling in another part of the country, and the relationship became estranged or strained, and uh, so basically this lady uh, wrote another will in which she reversed her decision. She seems to like to sort of, I don't know, go from one sibling to the other, falling out with one and then fall, she'd actually fallen out with the initial sibling, then went to, to our client and then sort of fell out with our client and then ended up back with the previous sibling except the complexion of things had slightly changed. Anyway, she, 
she changed her uh, will and reversed the, the, the decision. Our clients didn't know anything about this because of the, the, the they simply weren't in touch. It was sort of kind of an estrangement. Um, and, you know, she died and they discovered that she basically had reversed the will and hadn't honoured the promise. I mean, I think it's a copper-bottomed, copper-bottomed. It's a, prop, it's, a, it, it's a case of real steel because not only was a promise made in relation to contributions to the costs of looking after her during her latter years when she was seriously ill, we're talking about three, nearly four years, uh, but also she actually made a will. So if you're, if you're watching this video, you may be in a position where it was simply a promise that was made by um, the deceased. Um, and no, perhaps there may not be any sort of concrete documentary evidence to prove that promise, but in this case, the documentary evidence is, is you know, copper bottom, 24 carat. Now, even if you fall into the category of not having documentary evidence, the case law, most of which is around, incidentally, uh, farmers, uh, you know, working on the land and being told that they're going to inherit, and then the uh, person dies and they discover they've not been left with anything, and the uh, the uh, what's the word? I don't want to confuse you with jargon. But the default rules kick in and that person doesn't get any money and obviously it would be unconscionable is the word that the courts like wouldn't be right and fair uh, for that p person who worked all their life on the farm and been promised that they would inherit that they won't get anything they won't even get a cottage on the estate you know that wouldn't be right so um you may be in that category uh, in the case of my client uh, the category is slightly different. It's like, you know, clearly there was a, pr um, a promise made, but the question is going to be, well, how much? What's the proper uh, compensation? Anyway, so those that's the facts of the case. Uh, it looks like walks and talks like a really decent claim, and you're, you're pitching up at court. You don't think you want to spend waste money on expensive lawyers. Fair enough. All power to you. You don't have to. But if you're not going to spend money on expensive lawyers, you really need to get it right. Uh, you need to get the procedure right because it, it, if this particular case has told me anything, kind of reminded me of, of the importance of this, is you just, uh, uh, you know, apparently, apparently, the courts are meant to be open to anybody. The litigant and person should be able to run their own case. But it's a blooming chess game. And unless you, I mean, the civil procedure rules is just, just so complex. I can't understand it, <laughs> let alone a non-lawyer. So, you know, you do, if you do decide, if you do just feel that your case is strong and has got merit, and you do decide to represent yourself, be very careful. Life is not about just rewarding um, the, you know, the, you know it's not just about I mean you know Jesus says the meek will inherit the earth well I'm afraid the meek won't win the case as far as the courts of England and Wales are concerned it's a game and you've got to fight and you've got to try and win and I'm afraid just because justice is on your side I'm, unfortunately the courts aren't necessarily going to see it that way and the point is you could be saddled with a huge cost bill and have to cash flow expensive litigation to get any uh, any sorts of justice so don't automatically assume that just because you've got a strong case it's all going to be straightforward uh, it's, 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 it's a rather unhappy thing for me to be saying on this vlog but it's not you know life isn't fair and the court system's not fair you've got to treat it as a commercial entrepreneurial en endeavor a game and you've got to play it to win of course, if your case is of real merit, that's an essential component. That's, that's the goal at the heart of your case, of course. But, you know, if you like, it's got to be framed uh, like any uh, jewel has. It's got to be fashioned, uh, you know, it's into a, a, a proper case. It's not just enough to have the goal, all right? So, so... Warning number one, uh, if you're going to run it on your own, 
um, you've got to think about the gateways through which you're going to run your case. Now in this case, these are the sort of the heads of the heads of claim, the doorways to justice. In this case, there's a head of claim for promissory estoppel, there's a head of claim for potentially undue influence, there's a head of claim for lack of testamentary capacity. And if you the point is if you bring your claim and you find yourself in court and if it's an estate, there'll be executors and they'll probably be instructing lawyers quite an early stage to try and kick you into touch. Uh, so, and the costs will be racked, will be racked, will be being racked up. Uh, so, and they will be absolutely quick as lightning on uh, any weaknesses in your case. If you are bringing your claim, you've got to be clear what doorway you're going through. If you try and go through all the doorways all at once and you put this on your court papers and you get in front of a judge, um, of course the court will help litigants in person hold their hands and expect their opponent solicitors to help as well, make things crystal clear. But nevertheless, at the end of the day, if you bring you know, all four heads of claim and it's not clear that you're strong on all four heads, there could be cost consequences because your opponent could apply to strike out one of those heads of claim. Let's say they don't, you know, there's not strong evidence for undue influence. Um, you could be on the wrong end of a strikeout application which could be made at a very early stage of proceedings before your, you know, the, your aeroplane has even got off the ground, it's being fired at by your opponent's solicitors. And they could be uh, having a hearing listed at court, an hour, two hours, in which basically they are burning money. And you're talking about a barrister, a solicitor, court fee, you, you could be talking about a five grand bill. And if you lose that strikeout application, you have got to pick up that time. You've probably got to pay that within a prescribed period of time. So whoa, you thought you had this uh, meritorious claim but if you haven't brought it correctly, if you haven't read the chess book, the CPR, or if you haven't found some, what's the word, uh, you know, uh, I'm thinking of the word Babelfish, because I watched, I used to love that program, The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, remember they did it on BBC all those years ago, I'm showing my age, and I think it was a Babelfish that helped you understand another language. You've got to have someone to help you understand that language. <laughs> doesn't have to be a lawyer. I mean, you may be an intelligent person and you may have done a legal degree and you may be able to look at the uh, relevant provisions of the civil procedure rules and work out the rules of the chess game. But my point is, you've got to have some grasp of the, of the rules of the chess game here. So that's the first danger. Be careful what um, head of claim you're bringing and be, you know, and make sure that you've focused your focus in that regard and that's quite difficult for non-lawyers to get their heads around because as I say in the case of contested wills in the case of many different areas of law there's a danger of there being a whole variety of different gateways to justice and you, you need to think carefully or take advice on what is the right one okay I've said enough on that point so the other thing to be careful of is is court orders and court deadlines now uh, my experience, for what it's worth, is that, and I, I'm, I'm sort of ashamed to say this, but certainly in the county court and lower value claims is, uh, in litigants in person and lawyers routinely flout court orders and the courts never seem to do anything about it. I've got one case at the moment where the court ordered an expert, ordered the other side to provide uh, three experts in a dispute, a building dispute didn't do it. That was on a court order. Got, got it, I got it back to court. The, the court said, no, well, this hearing would have been necessary anyway because there are some uh, preparation, case management matters that need, needed to be addressed. Uh, ordered, but, but nevertheless, put in an unless order that the opponents have to comply with in a certain period of time. You know, they've flouted that one as well. And it, it's... It, and I was hoping that the court would make a cost order against my opponent for flouting a court order, basically. Didn't do it. Didn't even make a cost order. I, 
actually sent the cost schedule of the time it took my me, me my client's money is 500 pounds or a grand nearly just to make this application to get the other side to obey a cost order it, it, it my, and the court fee, 255 pounds, my client had to cash flow all of this just in order to try and get the court to slap the wrist of my opponent by making a cost order against him. Didn't do it. Different judge from the first hearing, different issues, you know, a absolutely um, disgraceful. And you can't blame the courts or the judges. They're extremely busy, understaffed, underfunded. Um, you can in a way because some of the judges are pretty spineless they, they don't want to where, where litigants in persons are personally concerned you know they they're worried about making an order and they're worried about making an order that you know they'll end up in court and it'll have to be reversed because they hadn't got the relevant information or the relevant papers at the time and they made a hasty knee-jerk kind of an order this is the problem it's a bureaucracy again this is a game and you need to learn the rules and you, you need to find an out probably need to find an ally to help you big caveat to this okay which I should probably put down on the screen is if it's a low value claim if it's on the small claims track and if it's not if it's cer certainly if, if, if it's not you know specialist then you should um, you, a lot of these things won't apply okay I'm talking about higher value claims um, the contested will inheritance act claims where you're talking about six figure sums you know? so that's that's now, although I've just <laughs> told you that uh, uh, the courts may not enforce their own orders, where um, um, the big, these bigger claims are concerned, where a court has made an unless order, and in this particular case, uh, my client, you know, hadn't really got himself organised, and so the, the judge at the hearing. Uh, rather than to strike out his, his application, he, he gave him time, but he did put in an unless order, unless you do something by a certain date, i.e. produce the papers which crystallise and particularise the particular head of claim, the gateway to justice that you're going to go through, remember, lack of testamentary capacity, undue influence, um, promissory estoppel, proprietary estoppel, whatever it is, unless you properly particularise the word that's used, and the legal term that sues your claim, uh, by a certain date, then your claim will be struck out. Now in this instance, my client did um, file his papers. He got us to help him to draft up his particulars of claim. He was still running his, the case on his own at this point, and just a, a, a digression is you can use lawyers to help you to run your own case save save you money you don't have to go all in and instruct a, a, a solicitor conduct the entire litigation and in this case the legal fees could be 30 or 40 thousand pounds if it were if it were to go all the way to trial which most cases don't so um, you know that is an option to consider if you are um, if you are in, in, in this situation so and he did file on the particular date, but he filed just shy of a four o'clock deadline. The point is not the rights and wrongs of this particular case. It's not um, my place to go into the details of this case on, in this vlog. The point is that the opponent has acted extremely aggressively in applying to have his entire case struck out. Now, you may think, well, that's just unfair. He's a litigant in person. He's actually got the stuff on the day. He might have got it a few minutes after four o'clock rather than before. Now, the point is, although that is unfair, and although I'm sure the court will not um, strike out my client's claim, the problem is, and this is really important for you to digest, is the problem is one of costs and cash flowing litigation. Because suddenly our opponent has racked up I goodness knows how much let's say it's a thousand pounds worth of legal costs just on this one little issue okay my clients are not uh, an elderly man he's not au fait with um, some of the bells and whistles on the internet and, he's, and it was uh, incorrectly uh, filed 
and now suddenly the, the other side have chosen to be aggressive and uh, uh, make, have made an application to strike out his entire, his entire claim. Even though it's a golden claim with real merit, as I said earlier, the opponents have nevertheless to play the tactical game, the chess game, of aggressively of, of an aggressive response. It's a calculated risk because they could end up getting uh, getting um, they could end up uh, getting told off by the judge and having a cost order against them and and told that they're racing everybody's time because they make an application to strike out. I mean, I actually think that's probably what will happen. The, the courts are going to are going to say this is this is outrageous. You've um, spent all this time and money on an application to strike out this person's claim because they've missed the, the deadline by this much. But the point is, orders are orders. The rules of the chess game are the rules of the chess game. They're entitled to make this application, and they may win it because they, they may get a judge who is um, a geek and who decides that no. And unless order was made, you can see how you can construct the argument for my opponent. And unless order was made, your clients haven't got themselves organised. They should have taken legal advice 18 months previously. The um, the person in this case, the testatrix, died two years ago. This has been this has been rolling along for ages. And so the court finally said, we've had enough. You're okay. You're to get in person, and we've made all the allowances that we can. But now here's an order. By this time and this date, you have got to do X. Well, I've just missed it by a few minutes. Sorry, you should have got it in a week ago. You shouldn't have left it to the wire. So you can see how there are... Now, this is a, a, a tactical decision, as I say, a calculated risk made by our opponents to um, apply real pressure. They're saying you're not entitled to anything in the will. The current will says that you're, you're not, you don't feature, sorry. What do you mean there was some promise made? Well, she, all she did is she changed her will and decided to leave something to, to us rather than to you. People can change their wills. The law doesn't stop you. In fact, the, the, the common law says you can change your will. You don't have to, the states can't tell you who to leave your money to. So you can see how um, naturally, uh, unexpectedly, the, uh, the, the executors, lawyers, well not the executors, that's a technical geeky point, but the, the people who are in the current will as executors, because the probate hasn't been granted, so they're not actually executors yet. Um, that's a geeky relevance as far as the point that I'm making. You can see how uh, they are you know, quite right to take an ag aggressive line uh, if they want to win the game, all right? And that is now created a lot of costs, uh, my costs, and the danger of my opponent's costs. And now they'll be saying, well, maybe we will withdraw our strikeout application, but only if you pay all the costs of the strikeout application. And very quickly, the client is in hot water financially, thousands of pounds. Uh, just in order to get out of the starting blocks with their claim. So the second warning is, you know, get yourself organised, properly prepared, a long way in advance, once again, just because you feel you've got a strong claim and you've got real merit, which I think this case does, uh, then, and, you know, maybe this case has... Uh, the outcome of this case will be that the current the wills are reversed because this this tatrix has met this tatrix has made a promise has actually validated the promise with a will that's been witnessed um, in, in return for being looked after while she was in a difficult situation she was hospitalised she had no one in the country she actually comes from um, from from overseas she was living overseas so she really needed the help of her sibling who put a roof over her head. You know, so it may be that this case, that we win the entire estate in this case. It may be that we win a proportion to acknowledge the fact that, you know, the, of, of the promise. But that's, that's a long way away. That's a, a distant sort of um, moat in a judge's eye at trial. Right now, we are in the trenches uh, with applications to strike out flying around because the other side do not want us to get to trial. 
and um, trying to uh, intimidate us into dropping the claim and, and, and send us packing because we simply can't afford to play the game of chess. Um, so it's it's so one of it's so fascinating how it all works. Uh, the, the deeper pockets uh, can very easily, you know, uh, the wolf of wealth can very easily chase away the impoverished rabbit, and, and that, my friend, you know, reality check. That's life. Don't be saying, oh, well, I'm wronged and no one can help me and take on a victim mentality. You've got to get your act together. You've got to play the game. You've got to play the game to win. So uh, that's, that's the second danger. Um, you, uh, you know, and finally, uh, just to buttonhole this point, read court orders. And if you haven't got a court order, chase the court and say, please, we don't seem to have had a court order yet. Can we have it? Because even though um, you won't be struck out, you may be at the wrong end of a, 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 um, a rather handsome, uh, a rather unattractive cost bill. Okay, so, uh, well, we've dealt with the gateways through which you have to bring your claim. We've looked at the the, the dangers and the risks of not being prepared and the importance of, of having read the chess book, the CPR rules, which are online, uh, or you can get a lawyer's advice on that. Uh, now, what's the next uh, sort of risk or the next danger that's involved? Well, in this case, Well, the third and final thing I want to say in this vlog is related to the second point, which is that there's a, the different courts are different ways of working, and you need to know the system and the machinery, as far as England and Wales is concerned, the court system. So why do I say this? Because you have to make sure that documents are getting to the court, um, and you need to know how to properly file things at court. And you want to get the court sort of on your side, so to speak. You want to know whether you can phone the court. All of this sort of thing is really important going forward. And you also obviously want to know which court, in, which, in which court to bring your claim. Now where uh, wills are, con are concerned, uh, where um, Inheritance Act claims are concerned, it's it's a more sophisticated system than just, you know, suing someone for breaching a contract to replace your French windows, you know, it's, uh, or, or even a car accident. You know, it's, it's a sophisticated area. It's, it's the, the, the Court of Chancery. It's, it's, it's quite specialist. But the, the, the actually barrister chambers that specialise in this area and nowhere else. And it will, you know, be issued and, and so on and so forth in certain courts, and there'll be certain criteria. That if your claim is a uh, hundred thousand uh, pounds or more, it must this procedure must be followed, and it must be issued in this particular court. All of this is in the chess book, the CPR. But you know, in, in the case of uh, wills and chancery, you know, it's, it might it might take some digging around. Um, so, be, the point is, um, be aware of and, and find out, educate yourself about the particular courts, not just about the law, not just generally about the importance of compliance with the court orders and strikeout applications and the dangers thereof, but also the law as regards uh, where to bring your case. In the case of Chancery Claim, Will's Chancery Matter, it will probably be first brought in a district registry, uh, and but it might then be transferred to a county court like a regular, like a regular trial. And here's an interesting thing: you probably want a county court which has a district registry uh, affiliated to it. Not all do, so that you can be sure that the judges know their stuff about chancery law. And in fact, in this particular case, the judge had to leave the courtroom to go and ask another during the last hearing to go and ask another judge for their advice and then they came back and they said to the other side, well it seems to me that these litigants in person have a claim of promissory estoppel. You know, now, so you need judges who know about law and procedure in the specific area of law because it is a specialised area of law. 
Okay, so I think that's quite enough to be going on with. This is very much a, a warning vlog. Um, I, you know, I'm, I'm quietly confident in this particular case we'll have a favourable result, although there's a danger that the client may lose some of their money to the lawyers, unnecessarily lose some of the money that they're going to get to the lawyers. And significantly, they've got a cash flow that because a piece of litigation, six months, a year, two years, yeah. So uh, that's the, those are the risks. So here's, the, so there's the warning vlog to summarize. Uh, make sure you've correctly pleaded your case. You've found out whether by looking at the chess book, taking legal advice or doing your own work, which head of claim you're running your case through and your papers are properly organized along that particular route. Uh, secondly, be careful about preparation in terms of court orders and just because you're a litigant in person don't automatically assume that the court's going to hold your hand all the way through and there could be serious cost consequences of you not complying with court orders. And thirdly, it's not just specialised law, it's also a specialised court procedure, so you need to make sure that you've brought your claim in the right, in the right court. I, I will have to go into, there's not enough time in this vlog to go into the details of, of all of that. For example, which court to bring your case in, your claim in, if you're challenging a will. You'll have to look at other vlogs that I'll be producing on this subject um, in due course in order to find that. If I can, if I can I'll put a little link as well. Um, I always put links in the description box, by the way, under these vlogs. Okay, guys, that's all for today. Farewell from rather lovely... Um, sunny, summery July Friday afternoon during the middle of the World Cup. I think France and Uruguay are playing today. England, England play, uh, who was it? England play Sweden tomorrow. So fingers crossed. Final thing to say of course is if you need legal advice. Um, I, I have such a crap record on this topic when talking to people or replying to emails. People will ring up and they'll want some sort of free legal advice and they'll think, oh, it's free legal advice. Great. I've got a lawyer for free and let's just keep him talking as long as I possibly can. He gets annoyed because you're just trying to pump him for free legal advice. He's not an idiot. More importantly, the legal advice that you get isn't quality legal advice because it's not tailored to the facts of your case. Lawyers need to, lawyers that love documents, documents, paperwork to lawyers is like water to a fish. They can't live without it, basically. It's the oxygen in their lungs. It's a sad fact. They, and everything at the end of the day, particularly as far as civil litigation is concerned, nearly everything. I mean, obviously, if it goes to trial, witnesses' evidence is, is you know, can be really critical, but invariably, it all comes down to the paperwork. So if you are going to ask Reverend Legal to give you a little bit of advice on the phone or by email, uh, or if you are going to instruct us formally to conduct the litigation for you, that they're two quite different types of retainer, a contract you can have with your lawyer, uh, then get your documents together in Apple Pie order, reverse chronological, or chronological, but at least chronological. I like reverse chronological, so the most recent at the top. Break one long PDF, if you can, or two if there's a lot of documents. Attach them to an email, write the story. I think I'm entitled to share the will because of X, a couple of paragraphs. Ping it off to the lawyer, then chase them if they don't get back to you, because, you know, in a week or two weeks. Do this all quite early on in the process, yeah. That make sure to allow buggerants loss of time factor between the course of this whole procedure yeah? um, and uh, you know then phone the lawyer but only after you've provided them the documentation and the email explaining your case okay you'll then get good quality advice you'll get a proper quote from them because they'll can see the extent of the case and how much of their time it's going to take um, and it will save you money because you've actually already done a lot of the work that the lawyer will do and bill you, you know, £350 an hour for. My rate's 250 300 in bigger cases in this area of law. So if you're going to do that, then if you want legal advice, I mean, if you want to 
the taxi meter approach, we offer that too. Um, but I'm just saying, word of advice, probably best to get your paperwork organised first. Okay, guys, hope that's been of value. Look forward to vlogging to you in the very near future. Bye for now. Hi folks, if you enjoyed this video or any others in the series, then please do hit the subscribe button. Subscriptions are obviously really important to us because they help push us up those YouTube rankings and get the good word out to the general public. Click subscribe.